This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation, specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e-learning to instructor-led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. The first steps of the pre-migration phases are determining the necessity for migrating a particular service to the new operating system. You know, before planning or performing this, especially in, uh, or in the case of going to Windows Server 2008 R2, we need to carefully determine why we should do it. You know, what are the advantages that the new system is going to provide? And how do they uh, accord with the organization requirements? There are a lot of different changes that are introduced with Windows Server 2008. These changes provide improved performance, improved security, manageability, and stability. Additional functions that are available using the new print and document services role in Server 2008, which were not even previously available in the, uh, excuse me, in R2, which weren't available in the RTM version. And so this is just a, a, an area where we can look and say, what are we going to get out of it, essentially? The first area we'll look at is distributed file system. DFS provides a logical hierarchy of folders that are stored on multiple servers. This provides load balancing, it provides fault tolerance, along with a unified namespace. One place that we can map drives to, to and then we see a logical hierarchy of folders. Those folders can be split around. Each folder can have multiple targets to give us fault tolerance, load balancing, you know, all of those benefits. Well, what are some of the new features in 2008? In 2008, uh, RTM and R2 provided something known as access-based enumeration. This basically means that I'll only see the folders for which I have permissions. That's very beneficial because it minimizes the hassle for users, seeing folders that they can't actually get into. We also have a new replication protocol, DFSR, that provides improved imp uh, performance and the ability to operate even when DFS is implemented on a failover cluster. You also have the network file system. If you have a mixed environment, this is important. It allows enterprises to save files and folders and share them between Windows and Unix systems. A uh, few new items of support, support for NetGroup, provides simplified control of login and shell access. It allows for the use of Kerberos version 5 for authentication and some other uh, additional options. And you also have the File Server Resource Manager, or FSRM. Technically new to Server 2003 R2, a lot of people didn't use it though. Provides administrators with a centralized console on which to manage quotas, in a folder uh, basis instead of the volume only. File screens, which is the ability to control the types of files that can actually be shared on the server. And then great reporting mechanisms of disk usage based on ownership, uh, file size, file type. Uh, those kinds of things. My quotas can limit people or provide notifications. My file screens can stop users from saving MP3 and AVI files to my file server, or it can just notify administrators. You really have a lot of flexibility. Uh, server 2008 R2 adds the addition of what are known as file screen classifications, which even give me more uh, flexibility. And then in Windows Server 2008 <clears throat> R2, the print services role has been changed. It's now called the print and document services role. And it gives a variety of enhanced functionality. Uh, there's several enhancements to printer migration. This is new options for the Migrate Printers Wizard and the Print BRM uh, command line utility. This giving me much more flexibility. We have printer driver isolation. That allows for better fault tolerance because the spooler can continue to run in the case of a driver failure for a specific printer. In the past, that would lock up the print server. If you lock up the spooler service, it's the same spooler service for all printers that the print server was managing. Well, by isolating the device drivers, we keep them apart from one another. Uh, print delegation, delegation of management and other snap and improvements. You have the addition of the XML paper specification or XPS type printers and drivers. That gives me great uh, improvements in the area of quality especially, but also in performance as it relates to or compares to GDI based printing. Then we have better uh, location aware printing improvements. Users running Windows Vista or Windows 7 will connect to the appropriate 
printer based on the type of network uh, that they have connected to. And so if I move, I have a laptop machine, uh, then, it, then that can change. So in other words, there are a lot of changes, but these are the things that we need to look at in determining whether or not to migrate our file and print services to Server 2008. And I think there are great advantages in doing so. Once we've decided that we're going to do that, then the next step is preparing to migrate. And so in the next section, we'll take a look at the process for preparing for migration.